Hello and welcome. Today we, I'm going to show you how to do a painting without having to draw. The first thing I did was I went on my computer and I got this picture. It was sent to me and I printed it out larger and what I did was chose sections of it to print and I printed out each individual section and then I glued, uh, taped them all together. I took the back of it and I scratched with my pencil and chalk so because you really can't find graphite paper nowadays so um, I did that to be able to trace it onto my surface the surface I got is a wood piece it's wood slats and it came from Walmart it was on sale for like seven bucks and I painted over it with some um, country flannel um, chalk country paint Let's see yeah and uh, to give it that chalk paint base and that way it holds paint really easily and also holds the chalk that I had on the back of my drawing um, on the back of my picture that I you know kind of traced over so that I would have basically a pattern to do and this is because I'm doing this as a portrait for this particular bull and I wanted the exact dimensions and I am horrible with that kind of stuff on portraits so um, that's why I printed out the larger pieces hi and welcome to Ivy Creates I'm glad you're here glad you've joined us this is a very special project for a very special little girl um, the bull's name is Hero and I'm doing a portrait for him because he uh, unfortunately was struck by lightning and passed away and just so happened to be this little girl's best buddy he wasn't you know really a full adult he was adolescent and he was her best friend and she's very very heartbroken over the death of her bull so um, I I would do a portrait I'm doing a portrait for her to hang in her room or on her door or what have you and at the end you'll see there you know there's several pictures of this bull at his you know in his home and also with the little girl so I'm very ha honored to be doing this particular portrait so what I did was is I used some white first to kind of just lay out the land and the best thing about using chalk on the back of my paper um, and using that as my pattern down on this is that you can paint right over it and the chalk just kind of gets absorbed and if you stay you know if you go out of the lines or whatever or if there's a chalk line showing you can kind of brush it off which is really awesome so I've got my paint pots and I'm a mixed media artist I use a lot of different types of paints and all that kind of stuff mostly I use like Americana paints um, some chalk country and some Dixie Bell so you'll see that I'm using different paints to color block all I'm doing right now is blocking in some color so that I have a basic idea of what this bull is going to look like and I'm trying to look at the picture the entire time that I am also doing this so I can make sure that I'm getting it right and you'll see I do a little bit at a time of course this uh, video is really um, fast paced you know I've got it uh, times like four or times eight in some areas um, to make it faster so it's not a really long video because this did take me a few days to do um, so that's why you speed it up and make it fast paced in order for you to get the idea of it now when you go back and watch you can always slow it down or do whatever you wish to watch me do it but I just sped it up because it's just much easier for you to get the whole concept um, thank you for joining me I really do appreciate it uh, please hit that subscribe button that notification bell and leave me a comment and let me know if there are any other subjects you would like me to paint or different things you'd like me to do so as you can see I'm going to now start to get into a little bit more detail now that I've got the colors just blocked in I really wasn't concerned about detail or anything I just wanted to get a general idea of where certain colors were gonna go 
that. So you'll see this is a, it's a long process. It's not something that's really fast. So um, now I'm taking some more of my chalk country. It's country snowfall. And I'm just going to be painting on the highlights of my bull. And I keep wanting to say cow, but it's actually a bull. And so I'm painting on some of the highlights to give it, um, to lift it up a little bit and to make the face not so flat. You want the face because a cow's nose is generally just, uh, it's not flat. It kind of tips up down at the bottom. And uh, so you definitely want to have shape to their face and to make it look realistic. I'm not a photorealism type of person, but um, I try. But I, I, you know, I don't feel that I'm there by any stretch, not at all. But this is an easy way to paint something if you just follow the colors that are in the picture. And you do, you know, like I said, I printed it out in black and white. And I ran chalk all across the back of the paper. And then I used the tip of the end of a paintbrush, the um, non-brush end, and went over it. So it would, you know, land, the chalk would actually get on my surface. So I could then use that. As my painting beginning I didn't have to draw anything and it is proportioned according to what he actually looks like so that is the good thing about it is um, it's it's realistic in that part so now I'm just going in since I did go in with some dark first on the mouth because it is dark under painting you're gonna be doing a lot of different under paintings and so I'm going back over now with the pink color that is shown in the picture and pictures in the bottom left corner and like I said at the very end I've got several more pictures of him um, this was just the easiest one for me to do of a portrait um, and it came out super cute I was really proud of it and the little girl just loved it she ended up hanging it on the door to her bedroom so now you can see I'm going into more detail and here's the thing, when you first start painting, paint with a larger brush, get those big strokes in there and big blocks and chunks of just color. And then you go back and you gradually get a smaller and smaller brush and do smaller strokes in order to get the details. And especially like the hair on the, on the bull, you wanna make sure um, that you've got the details of the hair. So if you start with a darker color underneath, and go with the lighter color on top it gives you your instant highlights and dark and low lights you know and makes it look more realistic um, I hope you're enjoying this I'm very thankful that you're watching um, been doing a lot of painting lately I I do a lot of different things I do crafts I do if you watch my shorts you can see my dogs and all that kind of stuff but um, this this channel primarily is for you know finding your gifts and making it easier for you to find your gifts as well as uh, different crafts and and just all kinds of new things you really should always try something new it keeps your brain you know really pumped up and ready to go so if you don't like something in the painting you can see that I didn't really like the shape that I was seeing around that eye. So I go back in and I darken it and I've done it a few different times. You can always go back and use your, um, and the best thing about this chalk paint, it's very forgiving. But um, the paints that I'm using in my paint pots, that's the acrylic part. So the chalk paint, you can go back over and over and over again. It's really easy. And if you don't like something, you just paint over it and you paint it until you're happy with it. It's not, not a difficult thing to do. Um, it does take time and practice to get it exactly. But the first thing, you know, when you first start doing it, all you're doing is just filling in color. Just think of it that way. You're not doing anything difficult. You're filling in color.
Now I'm using very short strokes and I'm putting in little bitty details um, just to help with the fur. So I'm using little short tiny strokes just to get it in there and to make it look like it's uh, separate, you know, not a flat, just color. What I do with my paint pots is I get those and I mix my own colors and I keep them in the little pots because I am very frugal with my paint. It costs a lot of money sometimes. Well, as much paint as I've got, it does it cost a freaking fortune. But anyways, um, you know, I'm very frugal with my paint and so I don't put it on a palette per se unless I absolutely need to mix something or use a really big brush. Most of the time I keep it in the little pots and that way I can con I can close it at the end of my painting and I've still got saved paint, you know, and I can use it on my next painting. Um, a lot of folks use palettes and to me that always seemed like such a waste, you know, because um, you, you might mix the perfect color on your palette and it dries out because it is acrylic, it'll dry pretty quickly. and and then you can't you know you have to remix the color again whereas the paint pots I can just close the lid and I still have that color it's very important when you do um, a portrait or a face or something like that um, this this bull had big black eyes but what you want to do is you want to add at least one little light which means a little a little dot of white somewhere on the eye and usually you want that in the direction of whatever the sun is or the lighting or what have you and you can see it in the picture um, you'd have to look at it really closely but you can see the highlight and that is what gives uh, a portrait life you if you don't put that little tiny dot of white somewhere on the eye and you know in the same direction on both eyes for some reason it just does not bring it to life like it does if you you do that you know and of course cows have wonderful eyelashes and so you got to have pretty long eyelashes and then also step back and take a look at it from a different angle you can turn it in all directions you can look at it from a different angle and because this is chalk paint I am doing a little sanding to kind of rough up some things um, and to show some of the underpainting um, that is another good thing you can do with chalk paint and I use like I said a combination of chalk and acrylic um, but when you have chalk paint out down as your base you can sand it and, and show some of the under colors And your finger, of course, is your best blender. It works the best out of any, any blender ever. <laughs> now you can see I just put a little bit of brown up in the lid of my uh, paint pot down there in the white and mixed it together and used that basically the cap of my paint pot as my little palette for that. Because I only needed a tiny, tiny bit. And I'm going to use my dryer. I use that on occasion. Um, it's in my heat gun and it does help dry it very quickly when you want to paint over something in the same area. But if you jump around enough on your painting, then you won't be running your hand over wet paint because it dries pretty darn quick. And so just jump areas around and uh, move and that way it doesn't get too dry doesn't get um, shoot I don't know you know what I mean <laughs> please leave me comments below let me know how you like this project um, I did enjoy doing this project I do horrible at lettering so I actually gotten letter stickers from the Dollar Tree so I put them down traced around them with my um, soft pastel pencil and then I just painted in what I needed to paint in because I like I said even with this I am still horrible at lettering I just I don't know I don't do so good at it my handwriting is awful
there's some people I see right and it's just beautiful and glorious and I am not one of those folks so what I'm painting on here is farm on the bottom and I'm gonna put hero up on top so it'll be hero's farm Thank you for joining me. Please don't forget to uh, leave me comments, subscribe, click that notification bell, all the good stuff. I hope you really enjoyed this project. Um, I'm going to be doing also a sunflower painting that I had commissioned as well. So um, that one will be my next post. As soon as I get that video edited and up, um, it'll be on there. I've been falling behind on my editing lately. My goodness. Just, you know, life gets in the way sometimes. So, um, I'm glad to be videoing and getting it all edited. That's the hard part. So you can see this was the little sheet that I got from the Dollar Tree. And I'm just taking my stickers and sticking them back on there because I'll probably use them again. They don't stick real well anyways, so they make for a good, um, like a stencil. because all this stuff dries so quickly i'm able to put the napkin down and the paint right over my painting and and do the lettering if you were doing oils that would be forever it takes months to dry that's why i switched to acrylics but i treat it the same and really you should pay attention to oil painters because you treat it the same as you would an oil paint i don't really see all that much difference um oil is better to slide around and it does give you a lot of depth but you know I've been practicing with acrylics for quite some time and I think I've just about got the depth down that I need um, from what would have been an oil painting of course there's always more to learn never forget that but it's it's important that you check out different mediums and different ways people do things so that you can learn from them Thank you so much for being with me and uh, watching me paint this and I really hope you give it a try and let me know if there's any other things you would like to do. Um, I, I really think you're going to enjoy my next video which is the sunflowers. It's very abstract and colorful and wild and I think you'll enjoy that a lot so um, be sure and tune in for that one. And Mr. Hero is just about finished and this little girl was so excited and so happy to have it. Um, I was glad to be able to give it to her. There's nothing better as an artist than seeing a little face light up when you give them a painting. Thank you again. subscribe button and the notification bell well if you don't hit that notification bell you will miss out on our Thursday videos so please go ahead click it and you'll be able to watch our videos that are coming up